My name is Ariela Landa and I will present you our project entitled The Use of Word Games to Develop and Maintain Social Skills. First of all, I will present you our team. I am the project leader and I am psychologist. We have in our team Professor Cassio Amado, who is a team member and a physicist, Professor Mauricio Tacano, who is also a team member and a mechanical engineer, Gabriel Batistoni, who is a team member and a chemist. And finally, we have Professor Gustavo Yachel, who is a team member and a physicist. At the bottom of this slide, you can see three images. We have two different projects. We have one project uh, of research, one research project, and we also have an extension project. These two projects are related to each other but I will present now the research project. But you will see that I'll have to talk a little bit about the extension project. So, let's start with the background. Environmental variables play an essential role in the development and maintenance of behavior. This means that if we want to teach a new behavior to someone, or if we want to maintain a behavior that a person already has, we have to provide an appropriate environment. In addition to this, we have that individuals spend most of their lives engaged in social exchanges and in interpersonal relationships, particularly for children, adolescents, and maybe young adults. School can be a place where these people spend most of their daily time. So in this sense, school can be a breeding ground to teach a kind of skills that we will need for our entire lives. And these skills are called social skills. And in this context, board games can be a useful tool because they can offer uh, different scenarios, different mechanics, and mailing different opportunities to interact with others. So considering all of this, we will try to answer the following question. Can engagement in board games contribute to the acquisition and development of social skills? To better understand the social skills, I will present an inventory created by two Brazilian psychologists professors Almir Del Preti and Zilda Del Preti to access the social skills of Brazilian people. The authors uh, divided the skills into five different groups and I will present each group. The first group is coping and self-assertion with risk. This group refers to skills of dealing with interpersonal situations that require assertion defense of rights and self-esteem, entailing a risk of undesirable reaction from others, uh, for example, the possibility of rejection, objection, or disagreement. And we have some examples of situations where we can uh, see these social skills. This is, these examples are introducing oneself to an unknown person, uh, approaching a partner for sexual intercourse or uh, returning products to stores or maintaining conversations with strangers. And in the inventory, uh, the item that best represents the, this kind of skills is in a group of known people, if I do not agree with the majority, I verbally express my disagreement. The second group is self-assertion in the expression of positive affection. This group refers to skills of expressing positive affection, uh, dealing with situations that require positive affection and self-esteem expression, and these situations involve minimal risk or no risk at all of an unwanted reaction. And uh, we can see some examples of this kind of skills in the following situations. Uh, praising relatives and the people, expressing positive feeling, acknowledging compliments, uh, defending another person in a group, 
and participating in trivial conversation. And in the inventory, the item that best represents this kind of skills is if I am feeling well, I express this to people in my circle of friends. The third group is conversation and social confidence. This group refers to skills of dealing with neutral social situations of approximation with minimal risk of unwanted reaction. And these situations mainly require the so-called social road during conversations and a good knowledge of daily relationship patterns. Uh, some examples of these skills are maintaining and ending a conversation in face-to-face -face situations, uh, ending a telephone conversation, approaching people in position of authority, uh, reacting to compliments, asking a favor from colleagues uh, and rejecting abusive requests. An item that best illustrates the, this kind of skill is when I am with an interesting person, I experience difficulty to keep up an interesting talk. So, uh, in other words, this kind of skill is when I don't know what people are expecting of me. So, I don't know what to say, exactly what to say. The fourth group is self-exposure to unknown people and new situations. And this group involves the skills of self-exposure to strangers or new situations, basically including the approach of unknown people. And these skills are partially similar to the previous ones, but uh, here these skills entail a greater risk of interlocutors' unwanted reaction. Uh, to further clarify, uh, if you were a person that scores high in this skill, so you will not avoid this kind of situations uh, where you can you have to talk with uh, strangers. But uh, if you uh, score poorly in this skill, so you will avoid this kind of situation. Uh, some examples of these, these skills are public presentations or lectures to an unknown public, asking for a favor or asking questions to unknown people. And uh, the item that best illustrates this kind of skill is I avoid asking questions to unknown people. The last group is self-control of aggressiveness. And this group uh, includes skills to self-control aggressiveness in aversive situations with a reasonable control of anger and aggressiveness. So that's important. That does not mean that unpleasantness or anger is not expressed. But this is done with some control over one's own negative feelings. So we can say that if I have self-control of aggressiveness, so I won't react impulsively in aversive situations. And one example of uh, this kind of skill is dealing with parents' criticism and with offensive mockery or games. And finally, the item that best illustrates this kind of skill uh, is when one of my relatives criticizes me for some reason, I react aggressively. Based on these skills, uh, we will use an inventory to access the social skills profile of our participants in our research. And this inventory has mainly uh, three basic characteristics. The first one is that the inventory access uh, all of the social skills that I've just uh, presented. And the second one is that the inventory is composed by 38 situational behavioral items. And the third one is that participants are supposed to answer how frequently they react as described in each item. So after that, 
we will have a social skill profile of each participant and we will correlate with another measures that I will explain to you in the following slides. Just to recap, we have five groups of social skills and these are coping and self-assertion with risk, self-assertion and expression of positive effect, conversation and social confidence, self-exposure to unknown people and new situations, and self-control of aggressiveness. So the inventory assess all of these social skills and it's important to say that the authors updated some items of the inventory and they did uh, little changes in some of these skills. So we will use the updated version in, uh, with our participants. So let's go to the method. But before, I want to present you a short video with our extension project. And that's important because the participants of the extension project will be the same participants of the research project. So we will have to understand a little bit more about the extension project. Now that I presented the social skills and our extension project, I will describe our method. So our data collection begins when the participant arrives to the extension project. The first step is when the participant goes to the registration section and our instructor will collect some personal data such as age, educational degree and socioeconomic situation. After that, the participant is supposed to go to a separate room uh, where he or she will answer our inventory. And at this moment, we will collect the social skills profile of each participant. After that, uh, participants uh, just go to, to another section to pick up a game among the several available options. So, uh, one of our instructors goes to the participant and say, Hi, what kind of board game do you prefer? So, the participants uh, can pick up a game of their preference. And after that, they have just to go to a separate room and play the game. And during this playing, we will collect the time duration and the times played. So, uh, the time duration of the game and how many times the participant played the same game. Here is our original timeline. So, according to this timeline, we will begin our literature review about uh, social skills and the use of board games in education in October. And we really began it. Uh, in November, we would continue the literature review and we will begin the data analysis of the first phase. And this analysis is just, uh, an just a kind of analysis of the manuals of the board games. But for us, the, the problem is January. In January, we would uh, begin the data collection for the second phase. And the second phase is the presential phase. So we couldn't begin this collection because we are during the pandemic. So due to the pandemic, we had to make a plan B. 
And I will present to you now our plan B. For our plan B, we intend to use some data that we had collected before the pandemic. So before the pandemic, we had collected data from 40 participants, but we collected only the inventory responses. So we will try to collect some other information. Uh, so we, we, we intend to send emails to these 40 participants and in these emails we will ask participants to answer our Google form. In this form we will split uh, some questions in two sections. The first section will have questions about personal data. So we will collect uh, data such as age, educational degree and so on. In the second section, we will collect uh, a measure of preference. So we will ask a question like, uh, what's your preferred kind of game? And for answer this question, we will present the participant some different kind of mechanics. We will group these mechanics according to social skills. So the mechanics more similar with a social skill will be in the same group and we will present five different groups but uh, we won't present the social skills we will present just the mechanics and the participant will have to choose uh, what mechanic he or she most like and after we have all of these measures we will we will check for some uh, relation uh, with uh, involving personal data, preference measures, and social skills scores. So our question is, is there any relationship uh, among these three variables? And this is our plan B that we hope we won't use, but uh, we have our plan. Here is some reference uh, that I used in this presentation. And thank you all for your attention and for your time.